everyone, welcome to Five for Friday. I'm Rebecca Maybe, and today we're gonna to be focusing on five things that you can do to prepare your client to have an overall smoother family portrait session. So years ago, I had this experience and it just made me realize that I need to be doing more to help prepare my clients to help ease their stresses, which is one of the reasons I wanted to get into this today. Basically, I was at this portrait session and I just met my client in the parking lot and we we're going over all the clothes and she's wanting second opinions and stuff and she's just a, a bit of a flustered mom, you know, like, and I totally get it. I've got two of my own, getting anywhere can be a bit flustering. Anyway, she was just in this flustered, stressed state and oh, about the outfits and one of her comments was, oh, family pictures are just one of the most stressful days of the year. And I thought, this is fun. This should not be the most stressful day of the year. And she was partially joking, but all joking aside, it can be flustering and stressful for clients to get to the session. So anything that we can do as photographers to help ease their stresses, as they get there and help them in educating everything that we can do to help prepare them for their session so that they don't pull those stresses into their session is beneficial for them and for us and for the final outcome of the pictures that we provide them. So let's go ahead and talk about those five things. Number one, encourage your client to show up early. And this isn't about you know, this is when the clock starts. This is, you know, if you're late, I'll cut into your time and your pictures. Those kind of things, you know, what are your policies and such. But this is more about the kids. It's huge for the kids, especially those little ones, little toddlers who need time to adjust to a new setting. You don't know what experience those kids went through or the family in general went through in getting to that session and how stressed, you know, the car ride was or what troubles they had along the way of so-and-so spilled on their shirt or you know then they had to figure out how to change it and whatever stresses they went through and so giving the kids time to get comfortable with the new environment and also it will help so they're not as distracted for pictures and it also helps because they can get a lot of those little wiggles out and be able to run around and just become more familiar with that environment and that really helps because it's less of a shock and it'll be a little less distracting once we actually do start doing pictures because they won't be doing as much of the looking around, looking around, wanting to explore, wanting to explore because they did kind of got that out of their system. So it really helps with the transition to have your client arrive early. And it also will help the parents be a little, have a few minutes to kind of de-stress and be like, okay, we made it. And so they won't pull in the kind of frantic getting their stress into their session them to arrive early but explain why so number two never assume that your clients gonna know everything that they need to know about the location that you've chosen you're gonna want to give your client as much information as you can about where to park where to meet you make it a clear landmark or a business front and make sure you've got each other's cell phones all of that will help so much to have a smoother transition into your session so one example I have was to Memory Grove in Salt Lake City. The Grove is like a very deep canyon park, a very skinny park, and basically I'd say, okay, meet me at the front gate. And this is probably the first few times that I'd shot there, but what happened is map system was leading them to the upper part of Memory Grove where they're actually looking down onto the grove. So they'd have to take this long zigzaggy path to even get down to find me. And it was confusing because this path would kind of be like this labyrinth maze where you couldn't see where you're going. You have to get down to get out into the park. And so I'm communicating with them and okay, well, you know, oh, well, yeah, I'm down in the grove. You gotta come find me. And so it becomes like this, like they have to find a maze to get down to me. I made the mistake of assuming that they knew what stone gate that we're meeting out in front of, where it was and etc. What I didn't do is give my clients enough information of where they needed to park. So in better preparation and say, okay, you're gonna park on this road and this is where we're gonna meet and you'll also see this or better yet I'd send them a picture this is what it looks like and so then they'd have all these things in mind and they'd know as opposed to just assuming oh this map system will get them there okay so another example I have is Park City so say I was meeting a couple in Park City on Main Street instead of saying okay meet me up on this east end of the street over by these cute colorful houses which is you know I've been there dozens of times I know what it looks like but I can't ever assume that they're gonna know what that looks like or that it's gonna be obvious enough to them and instead I'd say okay well meet me in front of the Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory and it's an established place that's been there for a long time and 
perfect. So their maps can help lead them there to something that I know that is gonna be in the system and be clear to them how to get there. If you give them one of two or three places to park, so that if one's full, then okay, well, they know right off the bat, well, here's another one, and they're not trying to figure out where else can we park around here, if it's a more populated city. Or okay, so third example, so I was doing a mini session day back to back, and I had just moved here, I hadn't been to that location yet, and it was over by the Bay Bridge, it was a beautiful beach location. Okay, I'm looking on Google Maps and such, and I'm looking, okay, here's a perfect place for them to park and yeah they can walk down and meet me here. One thing is there's several places to park in this huge park right and so I should have given them more than one place to park because it did get busier later in the day and some people couldn't find parking couldn't find parking and that cut into their session. I could have helped them more prepare of where to park and been like okay make sure you give enough time it gets busier later in the day and might be you might take this long to park so give yourself that window. And the other mistake that I made is people would come and they'd go down the stairs and I had said something like, all right, meet me on the far end of the beach that's closest to the bridge. It's right next to this and this picnic area. And so what I have found in the years that I've done this is oftentimes clients will just assume themselves that these directions, you know, will be enough, right? And that it... Um, oh, it'll be obvious to them when they get there, like they'll come right down the stairs and see the picnic area. But it's not like I would have known where they were going to park, right? And so um, what I found is a lot of them would come down the stairs of this particular parking lot and then instead they'd see this big fishing dock and this other white building and they'd go, okay, she said something about walking closest to the bridge. So then they'd make their way over to toward the bridge and then forget what I said about the beach and no there's no beach over there there's just a bunch of big rocks right so I'd be on the phone and they'd be on the phone and you know we'd be back and forth like oh do you see uh is there a police car oh no do I see some kids playing with balls is that you know no 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 come back this way and I'm trying to explain them I should have given them a bigger landmark right or more specifically a maps pin that link that I could send them, right? And sometimes I've had people who are not familiar with how to use that app or that technology and that's still confusing them. So any details you can give them with a big landmark that are as obvious as possible or better yet, a specific business front that you can lead them from within that area will help them so you can have a less flustering start to your session. And it really does make a big difference because if they are flustered in the whole process of just getting to you, that's gonna pull into their session and they're gonna be stressed about it. And they won't have that arrive early, good transition time to kind of go, whew, take a breath out. Number three is never just dive into doing pictures. You want to allow a bit of that transition time and to kind of warm up to the kids. And so I'll share one kind of story. Imagine you went to a pool party with family and friends. All these people there and it's fun and you have a few of your young children, right? And you get there and your young kids kind of need some adjustment time and you know that, but Uncle Joey comes over and he's excited to see you guys and he thinks that's all funny to take your six year old and just throw them in and ah, you know. And anyway, all joking aside, it's not that funny. <laughs> and your child is like, ah, you know, and about it. And it's like not a good transition into this otherwise fun event. And so basically, if you can help warm them up, just like the kid needs to slowly get in the pool, you know, help warm them up to the fun activity that we're doing and show them that it's gonna be a fun activity, then they're gonna be more into it and not be so flustered. And like we've talked about how they need some time to kind of adjust to the new setting, then that will really help. And, you know, you can bring a little toy and hi, it's so and so, you know, and just give them the idea of what we're doing. So number four, positivity is powerful when it comes to session. Your mood, your personality, everything that you reflect onto your clients will help them kind of absorb that or reflect that. And you want to be contagious, which this is actually a good way to be contagious. <laughs> and you want your happy energy to kind of bounce onto them and then them to kind of absorb that and so that they kind of catch on to that mood, right? You don't want your family portrait session to feel like the DMV. Your clients 
will provide DMV photos, you know, they're not gonna have any personality and energy and life to them, you know, nobody has that at the DMV, so don't be a DMV photographer. You don't know what kind of experience your clients, their kids have had in previous sessions. Maybe they had this awful experience with another photographer that was just super like, okay, like I kept going and going and going, oh, we have to do the more of this, and it just kept going and going, dragging on and on and on, and so, and had no fun to it whatsoever. And so that um, idea that the kids absorbed has now stuck with them. And so they kind of bring that ideal with them of like, oh, we gotta go do pictures again or something. One example I have is, is doing family pictures years ago with one family and four or five kids. And most of them were boys. I get out of the car and everything. And I'm going, okay, these guys probably have a lot of energy and they might not be the most enthused to be here. It's just kind of the nature sometimes of boys to be a little less enthused about the whole picture taking thing. We start to go into doing pictures, but I'm thinking, okay, the first thing we need to do is to get their energy up and get them into this. And so instead of just jumping into any post portraits, we just started off playing games. We started off playing a little bit of Red Rover, Red Rover. And then, you know, I'll call a specific person and then we get them running back and forth. And so now they're like physically, their blood starts pumping and stuff and they're physically more into this. And you're kind of connecting with them on this fun sports level, like something that they're more familiar with and like to do probably. And then, then you're incorporating that into the session and suddenly you've kind of spoken their language and you're kind of down in this level with them. And so now you're playful together and now they've you've kind of created this new ideal of what family portraits are. So number five, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the pattern that I follow to capture natural emotion. And I'll get more into this in another video, but we're just gonna kind of touch base on it today. Um, and the pattern is play, pose, play, pose, play, pose. It's very important that you incorporate play into your sessions so that you capture natural happiness and natural playtime, natural smiles. One of the things that we'll do, like I did mention with the boys where we started off the session with play, but then we'd go right into like a posed picture. So then they're still happy and energized and remembering that fun moment they had two seconds ago. So that's everything that we're gonna go through today. I hope this has been helpful to you and be sure to subscribe. Thanks, have a good day, bye.